Boinesen half a day gua husi pulen, and this is Pulen Speaks. And today we are going to fly through the Chamorro alphabet. And just to give credit where credit is due, the majority of my work is based upon the authors Donald Topping and Bernadita Dunca, specifically the two books of Spoken Chamorro and Chamorro Reference Grammar. So I owe them a lot because without these two books, I wouldn't even be making these videos right now. Anyways, let's get right into the lesson. Now, just to make things clear, originally Chamorro was not a written language. It was not until the 17th century when the Spanish missionaries came where the Chamorro language became written based upon the Latin alphabet. And over the centuries, the Chamorro writing system has evolved to what it is today, although not without its share of controversy, which is a video for a another time. So, for those wondering why the Chamorro language uses almost the same alphabet as English, that was a super quick explanation. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get right into the lesson. Out of all the alphabet in the Chamorro language, there are seven. Seven alphabets that I believe are crucial to know. And let me tell you why. The pronunciation for the majority of the Chamorro words are equivalent to the pronunciation in English. For example, when you see the Chamorro letters A, B, D in a word, you could pronounce these letters just like how you would in English and you would get more or less the same equivalent pronunciation as in Chamorro. While this is true for the majority of the Chamorro alphabet, there are seven exceptions to this, which I'm going to go through. Number one, E. I know it looks exactly like the letter I, but the pronunciation isn't. You pronounce E like E in the English word C. The second letter is A. Yes, I know, it is an E, but the pronunciation is like A in the English word eight. At number three, ah. Whenever you see the letter A with a little circle on top, which is a lonat by the way, you pronounce the letter A ah like the A in father. Now some people unfortunately confuse the letter A ah with another similar looking letter A. Ah. So remember, the lonat is the key distinguishing feature between the A ah and the A ah sound. Unfortunately, for many Chamorro texts, especially older texts, they did not use the lonat to distinguish the a ah from the a. Ah. Instead, they simply used the generic letter a to represent both sounds. So, you would have to rely on prior knowledge and context to find out whether the a makes the a ah sound or the a ah sound. So, Thank God for the usage of the lonat. At number four is tse. While it appears to be two letters, it is in fact only one. In English, we would pronounce this letter as che, like in chicks. However, this is not English. In Chamorro, it is pronounced more like tse, like in the beginning of the word tsar or at the end of the word flirts. So focus on the TS sound at the beginning of the word SAR and at the end of the word flirts. The fifth alphabet involves an N with a squiggly line on top of it. So imagine yourself like a cat. What sounds do cats make? Yeah. Here's an English equivalent. In the word canyon, focus on the nya part in canyon because that is your sound. 
at number six. Now, out of all the Chamorro letters, this one is in fact probably the most difficult to master. And this is not an exaggeration. In fact, I still struggle with the sound to this day. Now listen to how I pronounce it. Ne. Ne. Here it is in a Chamorro word. Mangi. You're probably thinking to yourself, I can't for the life of me pronounce this letter. But believe me, you can. And it's not just because I believe in you, but it's because you've been pronouncing this Chamorro sound for your entire life without even realizing it. Don't believe me? Well, try saying this word, singing. Ah. Did you hear it? The ni part in singing? Here's a trick. Try saying the word singing without the letter S in the beginning. So you would get inging. Now, simply drop the I and put it at the back of the word. So you would get the sound nyinging. Nyingi. Now finally, simply drop one of the ni, and you would get ni. Now when you feel comfortable with this, you could start adding vowels such as a ah or a, ah, and you would get sounds such as nga and nga. The last sound is z. As you could probably tell by now, smart people, the letter zu is not pronounced like a Y in English. Instead, Chamorros pronounce zu like an in-between sound of Z and D. And here's an English equivalent. Floods. The DS part of floods. Focus on that. Now I know, I know I only said there was seven, but there's actually an eighth one. And this Chamorro letter has no English equivalent. Well, sort of. And the eighth Chamorro alphabet is represented by this symbol. It is called a glota. Now what exactly is a glota? What exactly does it do? Well, that's a good question. A glota is a split second stop. Think of the split second pause in the English word, uh-oh. Do you hear that? That sudden pause in uh-oh is similar to how you would use the glota in Chamorro. And the glota completely changes words. For example, the word so-so without the glota means to eat. However, if you add the glotas to tsotso, you would get tsotso. Did you hear it? Did you hear the split second stops? Tsotso, by the way, means to work. So the pronunciation of the glota can mean the difference between saying I want to eat versus I want to work. So Knowing your glotas and recognizing it is very important. Now that we got that out of the way, there are two more Chamorro sounds that I want us to be familiar with. And they are diphthongs. And yes, I know they are not alphabets, but trust me, you will thank me later. If you don't know already, a diphthong is the combination of two adjacent vowels and its respective sound. So in English, it would be like how the letters O and I combined together form the sound OI in the word coin. And in Chamorro, the two most common diphthongs you need to know are OW and I. As you could probably guess already, OW is pronounced like OW in cow, while I is pronounced like I in eyeball. So in review, written Chamorro is identical to the English alphabet because they are both based on the Latin alphabet. 
Also, for most of the Chamorro alphabets, they could be pronounced approximately to the English equivalent, except for eight letters, which are E, A, A, C, Nye, Nye, Z, and finally Glota. And last but not least, we have two of the most common Chamorro diphthongs, which are Ao and I. I am now unfortunately going to end the video here. However, if you want to hear the rest of the Chamorro alphabet and its pronunciation and English equivalent word, the video continues on. Starting with the very first Chamorro alphabet and ending with the last. Siduus Masi for watching. This is Pulen Speaks and Pulen has spoken. Ah, like in nap. Use an HMR word, baba. Ah, as in father. HMR word using ah would be baba. Remember, try not to confuse this letter ah with a. Be, similar to bat. Use an HMR word, bonita. Tse. Like in tsar. A chamor word using tse would be tsetlu. De, as in dad. Use an HMR word, dunkalu. By now, you probably have gotten the format already. So, for the rest of the alphabet, I'm just going to say the letter and the relevant English equivalent and chamor word. A, eight, esti. Fe, fish, fison. Ge, go, gao. He, hand, hatsa. E, see, lee. Glota, uh oh, tzotzo. K, skin, kareta. Le, land, lassas. Me, moon, moo moo. Ne, nanny, tano. Nye, canyon, aganya. Nye, singing, ganga. O, bold, potlo. Pay, spin, platu. Re, rest, relos. Se, san, sangen. Te, tu, tungo. U, flute, utsan. Ze, floods, zuus.